Speaking of the effects of media on people, there was a story that I'm surprised hasn't been ran with with these anti-gaming lobbyists. And it is, oh, where did I put it? Okay. Jake Evans' confession, killing mom and sister inspired by Rob Zombie film, the Halloween film. A judge in Texas has released a teenage murder su suspect's confession in which he says that the 2007 film Halloween by heavy metal musician and film director Rob Zombie inspired him to slay his mother and sister. Quote, while watching it, I was amazed at how at ease the boy was during the murders and how little remorse he had afterward. I was thinking to myself, it would be the same for me when I kill someone. 17-year-old Jake Evans wrote in his confessions, according to a copy released on Thursday by Parker County Judge Graham Queens Queensberry. Now, here's where things get weird. Later in the confession, he says, after I watched the movie, I put it back in the case and threw it in the trash can so the people wouldn't think that it influenced me in any way, Evans wrote. Then why the hell would you say it did? Or at the very least, why would you get... This makes no sense. Why would you confess to it? That makes... Hmm... My plan was to kill my sister and my mom at my house and then go over to my grandparents and kill my older sister, Emily, and my two grandparents. Because, yeah, the kid in the film, he murdered more than one sister and uh, he also killed his grandparents. This is clearly a case of the movie influenced this kid to kill. I mean, my God, the parallels, right? And then I was going to wait until morning and kill my other sister, Audrey, because she was visiting from college, the confession says. The initial plan, it says, was for Evan to use a folding knife that belonged to his father. He imagined killing his sister and causing her pain, end quote. But the confession says after further consideration, he decided he did not want them to feel anything. So he used a 22 revolver, you know, just like in the movie, that he had stolen from his grandfather. I set the pistol on the bed and was nervously opening the cylinder over and over again. Okay, I'm going to spare you on this. You can read the article down in the underbar. But no. You think Michael Myers cared as his character motivation what the people felt even when he was a kid? You're acting like you're trying to emulate Michael Myers, except for you're not emulating Michael Myers. He doesn't carry a gun. He doesn't care about the feelings of his victims. He doesn't care about anything. He cares about what he cared about, what he felt about, and he didn't care how he, what he had to do to get to that. If we could even give him that much, considering especially a zombies film really muddied the waters as to the actual motivations behind Meyer's work. Never mind the fact that Myers also beat to death the, a kid who made fun of his mom. Did you do that? No, apparently you didn't. But no, no, no I, this is why I'm surprised. Oh, this seems like a clear-cut link between violent media and real-life violence. Have most of you heard about this until before my broadcast? Chances are you don't. You know why? Because there is none. Maybe, maybe, in this case, this kid's 
type of, of mental situations, not to mention any number of outside factors in his home life or his home experience that may or may not have been an influence. It didn't matter that the movie was there. There's any number of movies of kids who killed. There's hell, trauma release beware children at play where kids cannibalize uh, people in the town as well as kidnap other people and rape some of them. And uh, it's a terrible movie, granted, but it's got kids doing things against adults. Terrible things. God, awful, terrible things. And is that being blamed? Did that cause anything? And that could technically be considered readily available. But no, no, you know, it's still the video games, right? Because never mind that this is a video either, right? Right? Never mind that this is a video. No, but it's video games. Video games are more dangerous than guns, right? Right? But this doesn't bode well for us. I'm surprised that the outlets haven't taken this and ran with it, but it's probably because there is no link that can be made. You can say that the kid was influenced by the movie, but then again, all it did was inspire him to kill at the very most, and he did consider it killing. If you think about it, he shot people to death. He didn't stab them. While sh shooting can hurt, you've got a hot piece of metal burrowing into your body and exiting into tender parts of your flesh, depending on where you're being shot. But stabbing? I've been... I've been cut, well, I used to cut on myself, and I've been cut really deep before as well. It's not fun. It's not a momentary, ooh, ouch, that hurts kind of thing. Not that being shot is either, but there's something wrong with this kid. And the fact that he, as well as many people in his same camp, have easier access to movies, not that I'm saying that movies in any way influence people to do things they wouldn't normally do. But if we're going to talk about influence, how about the ease of which the fact that this kid had access to get this movie? You know, at least with rental places, you know, the things that we had no, didn't have enough faith in to try to, to keep, they would not rent R-rated movies out to minors. I know because I was stopped, or at times I was even carded, even if I looked like I was over 18. And I appreciated that. Not that I ever have bought into the idea of that these movies, these video games, this music influence people. But obviously, this individual wasn't well. And if this had been a video game he was talking about, which I'm sure is, would have been the main reason why outlets would have jumped on this, right? Because video games are the target right now. Other media, we could care less unless we can draw a direct comparison. But no, no, we got to draw implied comparisons like the kid in New Mexico, the 15-year-old who slayed his family, including his two-year-old sister for freak's sakes. And who, just because he talked about violent video games, oh, there's a connection. Here we have a kid who says that he was directly influenced by the movie Halloween that he watched over and over and over again and inferred things with it because of the exquisite acting of the people involved. Well, exquisite acting with the zombie films, you can debate that, but I digress. I'm actually a fan of his films, but I, whatever. The point is, you've got somebody who's literally saying that I was influenced by this. In fact, I tried to throw you off the, the trail, but for some stupid reason, I decided to say that it was an influence. And nothing. Nothing. You've got everything with inferred influences of, by video games, of violent acts. The media is all over it. Here we have a story of somebody who is literally saying, this movie made me do this. And nothing. But then again, you've got, what was it? I think it was John Hinckley, who, to impress Jody Fisher after watching the cat taxi, taxi driver, decided to impress Jody Fisher by showing that he's, he's manly, by getting up the balls to shoot at Ronald Reagan. Or was it Reagan? Yeah, Reagan. Yeah. 
you know, because he thought, oh, that would get me noticed by her because I'm just a man in a sea of men. And how is she going to notice me unless I do something to make her notice me? I'm going to impress her. Of course, he was mentally ill, too. But were people saying, oh, look at John Hinckley. He was inspired to impress an actress in a movie after watching said movie. So these movies, they're influencing people to fall in love, so in love with these stars that they will literally kill people to impress them. Not to mention the stalkers and the woman who died, whose name escapes me off the top of my the actress who died, who created stalker laws for celebrities. Except, oh right, they should be used to stalkers who want to kill and or shoot them because they're giving up their rights as a private citizen to be famous. So they have every right for us to be in their private lives to the point of stalking, right? Anyways, my rant on the stupidity of, well, they give up their privacy to be famous argument uh, and how it could pertain to the same idea about stalking and how that's been an issue here. I'm just surprised this isn't being made into a thing. You know, not that I want it to be, but I mean, come on. Weaker connections have been made when, in the case of a video game, being in the home of somebody who happened to kill people or a lot of people. And yet here we have somebody screaming that, yes, this influenced me, and nothing. You're hypocrites. You are out-and-out out hypocrites who do not care about the social aspects of, of this media and any influence it may or may not have. Of course, there is no influence, even in this situation, but I digress or at least not one that could be attributed to something that would happen in somebody who is of a normal uh, mental state. Unbelievable. 